and welcome back to another Subconscious Mind Mastery Podcast. Thomas Miller back with you. Thanks for joining us. This is a very big week. I've been talking about it a lot in the other podcast that I've been doing called Fun Astrology. It's a daily podcast. And what's going on, and, and uh, this is not going to be an astrology show that's over there, not here, but something that is happening in the sky triggered something that happened in the soul. And I want to tell you the story. This is by far the most personal, transformational, and significant podcast I think I've ever done. So first of all, some housekeeping. For those of you in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we are going to be meeting on this big Saturn-Pluto conjunction. That's January 12th, Sunday, January 12th. If you'll just email me, thomas at Subconscious Mind Mastery. If you happen to be in the Dallas-Fort Worth area this coming weekend, it will be a very informal get-together, and I'll give you all the details, okay? We're just going to be hanging out with some friends, Daniel and Kimberly, Daniel Dano V, who did the three-part series with me a while back. I think they're going to be there, and a couple of other listeners have expressed interest. So we're going to just be very informal, having coffee on a Sunday morning, getting together. Now, the other thing is, if you have not listened to the Fun Astrology podcast, this would be a really good week to do so. <laughs> I'll be keeping you up to date on this Saturn-Pluto uh, scenario, and we are moving toward what I have no idea. And that's part of why I wanted to get on here and talk about this particular story, because it happened yesterday. This is still very fresh. I had to process it. So, you know, f since I turned my life around after that second divorce in 2000, late 2007, basically the beginning of 2008, and it was like, I cannot live this way anymore. The wheels had come off the bus twice, I was in a position of like saying, this is not who I was born to be. Had to go find out why, figure out the answers. That led me to the subconscious mind. 2013, got a tap on the shoulder to do a podcast. I didn't know what to do, so I started telling the story. And that evolved into what we have now of this and Fun Astrology and Majana and her podcast, Life After Life, the whole package. Fred Dodson's audiobooks, a couple of years in Aspen, the whole thing. And some of you have been along for the whole ride. <laughs> and I thank you and, and compliment you. Thank you very much. That's very honoring. And yet, you know, I've always said it's like peeling an onion. And it is, right? But there was always still something kind of missing. And yesterday, under this Saturn-Pluto energy, very much triggered by a couple of astrological alignments that I talked about over on the other podcast, the clarity and completion of that subconscious programming finally came to fruition and to awareness, to consciousness. And I'd like to tell you that story if you'd like to hear. I hope I can do this symmetrically enough. It's kind of like connecting dots. So the first piece of the puzzle is obviously the subconscious mind. And in some of those earlier podcasts, I talked about literally dialoguing with your subconscious. I do that frequently, asking questions, what's going on, and listening for resonances, either thoughts, prompts, positive feelings, negative feelings, angst, comfort, etc. So that's a piece, dialoguing with your subconscious, dialoguing internally. You've heard me tell the stories about doing that on the hiking trails in Aspen, etc. So that's a piece. Let's set that aside. Another piece is something that I did a couple of years ago. In fact, I had this guy on the podcast. His name was Rob Mitchell, brilliant stock trader, computer programmer, etc. And Rob led me through a particular past life regression. And what came from that was that somewhere back around, I'm going to say the 12 or 1300s, it, the, the exact date didn't come clear, but it was medieval. Now, this is going to be a little bit... Um, how shall I say this? If you don't want to hear the details of this, skip over about the next 30 seconds. All right, I'm giving you a pause there to do this. Uh, one of the deaths that this soul experienced, this soul that is now Thomas Miller, one of the deaths that it experienced was from a guillotine. And that came clear in that Rob Mitchell reading. 
And that was all the clarity I needed or could, I guess, handle at that time. But we think about subconscious programming and things lingering in our soul. Think of the horror and the shock that that would have invoked. And you say, well, that was okay, so let's play this out, maybe five or six or four or three or whatever lifetimes ago. Wouldn't that have been diluted some? I don't think so. And as these themes, as I've gone back and dissected these themes and traced things back in this earthly plane in this life as far back as I could and realized, hmm, there still is more. And I just did. I couldn't put my finger on it. But in spite of all this work, my subconscious reaction would still be to uh, to buck and fight. And there's something wrong. It's like, no, this isn't going to work out. It was a fear based dark side, like like the worst possible scenario was going to unfold. That was always the kind of the initial feedback. All right, so let's set that piece aside. And now let's look at the basket of tools that have come together to basically, that for this soul, this soul that embodies Thomas Miller, how, what, what got put together for this transformation? And it started with those two divorces. I mean, being in a space of, like I said, I did not come to do this in this life and working from there. But the year in the RV, dissecting my life, starting this podcast, doing this work of the subconscious, coming across Fred Dodson, narrating now to what will be soon 26 audiobooks for Fred, spending a couple of years in Aspen, just working this out on a on a soul level in a place and an environment where I was able to connect with myself in a way that I have never been able to before. And then coming back and in this interest in this really being directed or pointed to so clearly astrology, which has given me this incredible perspective on the energies that affect our lives and then bringing it right up to this week where we have this astrological event that has not happened in literally 500 years. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of it here because I have a video that's in the download freebie section of our website. Our product website now is soulfoodtalks.com. And if you go to the freebie section there, you will find a video on Saturn-Pluto where I have the chart up and go back and we show you what happened the last times this configuration was there and explain the whole thing. That's the place to do to get that. Soulfoodtalks.com and go to the freebies section. And this is very significant because through this past life regression, I knew that something had happened back there and that there had been at least three or four lifetimes that I think we connected with. Maybe three. Maybe that was four lifetimes back. But anyway... Anyway, it was um, something that happened a while back and that this was not resolved on a soul level. And this is the key. Now we're starting to hone in on the key to this thing is that here was this unresolved issue from the past. It was the programming from that death. Now, the astrology becomes kind of a big piece because as I had been pondering the big key elements in our chart, the nodes of the moon. We've talked about that at length on this podcast. And if you have not heard those episodes, go back and uh, you can go to the website. This would be an easy way to do this, is you go on the website at subconsciousmindmastery.com and go to the search box, and you can just type in nodes, N-O-D-E-S, and that will give you all the episodes where we've talked about the nodes of the moon. That's one of the areas in the astrological chart that paints the picture of our past, what we brought with us into this life in order to deal with. So a couple of months ago, I was getting ready for the day, and this epiphany just hit me that as I was thinking about the nodes of the moon and the characteristics of that and what I brought in and what that might have looked like and all of the things that I've been putting together in these astrological readings that I've been doing, I was doing on myself and through that, it hit me that this death experience is what imprinted or stamped that fear into my subconscious soul to the extent and the degree that none of the tools had completely reprogrammed that. 
it had been a process of awareness, absolutely. It had been a peeling of the onion, you better believe it, but it hadn't gotten down to the heart of the matter. Now, here's where the energy of the day, this is why I love looking at the astrology, because here's how this ties together. So this great big Saturn-Pluto conjunction happens this coming Sunday, January 12th, 2020. The weekend before, so this was January 5th, there was a certain alignment, let's just say, between the moon and Neptune that basically, and again, not to go into astrology here, that's over there, but looking back in retrospect, I can see now where that was the trigger that opened this up. And these are very slight, subtle windows of opportunity, and that's why I love to watch the astrological chart, especially in the mornings, because it gives us insight into what that day might possibly hold, windows of opportunity. So here's how this played out, and I want to just tell this because it's very personal, but it's how things happen. So this is raw and real. So Majana and I went on this walk, this little place not far from the house that has a nice series of lakes, and we like to walk around it. And I got about halfway down there, and, uh, you know, since turning the big 6-0 now, something happens about halfway through that walk that is a 60-year-old problem. <laughs> and that is there is one restroom, and it's back up at the starting point. So we were the farthest away, probably, I don't know, 30 minutes. And you realize it's Sunday morning. It's a beautiful day. Everybody in their bicycle and their dog is out on this trail. And now, all of a sudden, you are going to have 30 minutes of subconscious programming. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. It's all going to be okay. <laughs> These are things that we have to deal with now. <laughs> okay. So in the space, and then, uh-oh, there's a problem. Because up there where the bathroom is, is also a playground. Now, it is, I'm talking a spectacularly beautiful, not a cloud in the sky, perfect temperature Sunday morning. So what are the chances that that restroom is going to be occupied when I get up there? Now, I, hang on with me here. There's, there's a reason why I'm telling you this. <laughs> because this is what opened the dialogue that led to the problem. And this is how this kind of thing works. At least it's how it's worked for me. So I'm walking along, motivating myself that all is well. And then I start to ask my subconscious to make the restroom available when I get there. And I mean, I didn't but just make that request in my mind. I mean, you know, this is all just thought patterns, right, or connections. So I'm like, hey, subconscious, you could do this for me. Just go up there and clear that thing out so that when I get up there, we're good to go. And immediately I get this pushback. So if it were dialogue, it would say, here's how the dialogue would go. Hey, subconscious, you can do this. Just go up there and open that thing up so that when I get up there, I can turn that knob handle on the door and all is well. Well, you know there's going to be a 50% chance that it's going to be full. In fact, you know the way that things work out in your life, it's going to be full and you'll have to wait because the women's will be full too, so you can't do that and there's going to be kids around. Okay. But we do all this work, and I know that it is possible that you could go up there and clear that out. So why are you pushing back? Is it either that you know it's going to be full, or are you unwilling to, to take on the request? It's not either. You know that this has been the way that your life is. Yeah, I know, but we've been doing all this work. I mean, look, this isn't a new car or a new house. This is just having the bathroom open when I get up there. Is that too difficult? That's just the way it is for you. And, you know, that's pretty close to the way the dialogue went, at least up to that point. It was very much a, uh, well, this is kind of the way that it is. So I was in this meditative dialoguing with the subconscious phase anyway, and it shifted to that conversation. And so I asked, okay, wait a minute. Why is it that you would think that this would be such an impossible task? See, this is the dialogue piece. When something doesn't click right, ask. 
ask for clarity, ask for understanding. Say, look, I know we want to be on the same page, you and me, <laughs> saying to yourself, uh, but there's two sides, right? There's two parts of us. And this part that might not be completely aligned, ask what's out of alignment. So here's what I did next. I said, okay, can I do some muscle testing and ask you questions and got a yes. So I have a favorite little thing that I do with my hands on muscle testing when normally this is now mostly intuitive, but I just, this was in the space of this needs to be muscle tested. So let's just dialogue. And I asked, is this something, is this pushback something that originated in this lifetime? And I got a clear no. So I said, is it something that originated while I was in the womb? I got a clear no. I asked, was it a recent past life? And another clear no. So I said, so this is a really deep multi-lifetime subconscious program. Is that correct? And I got a yes. Aha. And I asked again for clarity. So is this why there's that pushback? And I got a yes. Now, if we go back to the pieces that we've put on the table, I asked because I knew that that death scene was prominent. So I just asked, was it related to that death? And I got a yes. So again, in this dialogue, okay, so the reason why there is this unresolved area of this pushback of just asking, why could you not open up the restroom? I mean, that's, you know, the manifesting stories of, I need a parking place. Well, you know, it's like, from this, but but it was far deeper than that. I don't care what the request was. The issue was that there was this pushback. Like you put a request out there and rather than getting this, yes, hey, let's go for it. There's this, ooh, fear, something's gonna be wrong. Something's not gonna work out. Something's not gonna be okay. You're going to have a problem. There's going to be difficulty. It's not gonna be the way that you want it. See, that kind of thing, that pushback. So, okay, so this is from that particular occurrence. Yes, and that's why there's still pushback. Yes, so I went into it deeper. Now, walking for me gets me into an almost trance state. So I just let that consume me, blocked everything out, and really went into that episode. And I firmly believe that the alignment of these planets, now this could have come at any time, but I'm just saying there was a trigger in place and the alignment of the planets that I talked about on the January 6th Fun Astrology podcast, you can listen to that for the details on what happened astrologically, that was the trigger of this, the rest of this epiphany connecting all the dots. Now this next part was just walking and being, and this was again, fairly much pretty close to a trance state. And I just sat with that experience. And what came very clear, and again, if you want to skip over this, hit about your fast forward about twice, 30 seconds. What happened in that death scene became very clear. And that is that the guillotine was true and it was face up. And that was the horrific death that had been reflected in very subtle through a lot of meditation coming from the south nodes of the moon in my astrological chart. But that was the shock and horror and searing subconscious programming that had remained unresolved. So after I connected with that, is that what it was? Yes. Now at this point, I could feel it down to my toes. My soul knew that it had connected with finally the source of the problem. So I just sat with it. Well, I didn't sit with it. I was walking probably a little more briskly at this point. <laughs> but I, I was still in the dialogue process and just asked, so if this were resolved, then it would be clear open space. Yes. And then I asked, so this has not been addressed in any subsequent lives? No. So then I asked, so this was brought forward with the opportunity 
all this stuff that has happened brought it up to give this physicality called Thomas Miller the opportunity to deal with this so that this could be released on a soul level. Yes. Okay, then I asked, all right, is this something that can be resolved just by a decision or a choice? No. So this is going to take additional programming. Yes. Will it all be resolved in this lifetime? No. Can it make incredible strides in this lifetime? Yes. And then it became clear that everything that I do from this moment forward, knowing the magnitude of this particular event, will set the stage not only for the next life, but also for resolution for the soul that is inside this body. Now, fast forward to getting ready to go to bed. It was really a solemn moment. As I laid down and closed my eyes, subconscious started talking, and it was elated. I had an eternal peace, elevation, joy, release, relief that is just cannot imagine. And the dialogue went something like, it was a very subtle, soft voice, but it was saying, finally, we are together of one mind. And it was almost like the soul was saying, finally, this body, this person is going to resolve this. It was an amazing experience. It was like the soul has this need of the body of the person, Thomas Miller, to get it to be able to resolve this unresolved conflict. And as we bantered back and forth a little bit, the soul was just absolutely ecstatic and felt like, yes, we're going to get there this time. And here's where this comes full circle, and this was another epiphany, is under this Saturn-Pluto conjunction, you get the video to download, you'll see that this hasn't happened for 500 years. And you can see from the video that it is clearly very f structurally shifting energy. And what came also clear is that it took that energy in order for this soul to deal with that issue. And that is how powerful this alignment is. So that's why I say something that happened in the sky deeply affected the soul. And now the real work begins. <laughs> it's like, it's all been practice up until now. What episode of the podcast is this? 200 and something, almost 20. And now we're starting over. <laughs> because because now the, the rest of the series will probably be the journey of reprogramming this on a really deep soul level. I don't know what that's going to involve yet, but what I do know that it has requested is for me to create an audio to help so that I will listen to, and I'll produce that and create that so that I have something to for the repetition. Then, of course, there's the emotional piece. So repetition and emotion equal reprogramming, right? So we'll bring the emotional piece in and other things that I will certainly keep you informed of. Now, look, I know that was my story, and you cannot connect. You can hear it but not connect with it. But what I want you to do is to connect with your own story. Now go inside, and if any of what happened with me yesterday can help you get to the bottom of your soul's journey. What might be in your subconscious that needs to come up and out? Are there any unresolved issues? Are there any deep issues? I hope this will really take you into the depths of your soul. That's the intention. Well, we have more stuff to do now, don't we? <laughs> and we will. Catch Fun Astrology uh, every day if you would like to. Majana is just doing great on life after life. And we have our store at soulfoodtalks.com if you'd like to connect with us there. We would love to have you experience the work that we're doing in any way that you would like. And always, we love hearing from you. And comments on iTunes are always appreciated on any of the podcasts and you can reach me at thomas at subconsciousmindmastery.com. 
Thanks so much for listening to this. My prayer and my hope and my wish is that it takes you deeper into your soul and helps you on your own journey. Until next time, thanks for listening. I'm Thomas Miller. Enjoy the journey.